Position fixing technique using a radar range and bearing is one of the primary methods for fixing a ship's position in coastal navigation. This technique is particularly valuable in areas where visual navigation may be limited, such as in poor visibility conditions like fog, night, or heavy rain. Radar can provide accurate ranges to known navigational features such as buoys, lighthouses, headland, and other radar conspicuous objects. A position fix can be obtained using a single or multiple navigational aid. This accuracy is often better than visual estimates, especially at longer distances. Even though radar is a primary tool for navigators, it should be used in conjunction with other methods to verify accuracy and enhance safety. To take bearings and ranges using a radar, we need radar conspicuous objects such as radar reflectors, harbor walls, headlands, and large cliffs, which provide strong radar echoes. Buoys and other floating objects cannot be used as reference points as they might drift away anytime. Shorelines, or headlands like this, with drying heights are not reliable reference points, because they might be above the water at the time we take the bearing and range. Looking at this headland, it seems that it is a good reference point, but the green color on the chart indicates drying heights. This shoreline is exposed at low tide, and the radar echoes may appear like this in the radar display. If no other navigational aids are available, check for the height of tide, as this reference point can be reliable at high tide. Remember that drying heights are measured above the chart datum such as mean low water, or mean lower low water. Assuming that this is the planned track. The ship is proceeding at a course of 139 degrees true. Upon checking the chart, Saginohana Point is one of the good landmarks to take a bearing and range, since the coastline has no drying heights. As we check the radar display, the echoes are very clear. To determine the bearing and range of Saginohana Point on the radar, we can use the electronic bearing line or EBL and variable range marker or VRM. Alternatively, the cursor can be used depending on your preference. Since we have already an existing VRM and EBL, we will use it. The movement of the EBL and VRM that you can see in this video is just an animation. If you are on board, kindly refer to the manufacturer's manual on how to use the EBL and VRM. First, move the electronic bearing line to our reference point. Next, bring the variable range marker to our reference point. The bearing of Saginohana point is 227 degrees true, and the range is 2.80 nautical miles. Assuming the time when we take the bearing and range is 0920 hours. The time should be marked on the paper chart after the plotting. Let us go to the chart. We will use this compass rose to lay down the bearing of our reference point. The bearing of Saginohana point is 227 degrees true. If this is 225 degrees, and this one is 230 degrees true. This is 227 degrees. Let us bring our navigational triangle along 227 degrees. Then drag the triangle to our reference point. From the reference point, draw a line in the opposite direction of 227 degrees, which is 047 degrees. This line is called the line of position or LOP. Somewhere along this line is the ship's position. The reason why we draw our LOP in the opposite direction is because the bearing was taken from the ship towards Saginohana point and we plot the LOP from this point towards the direction of the ship's position. Next is to plot the distance of our reference point which is 2.80 nautical miles. Use the compass divider to measure 2.80 nautical miles on the latitude scale. Then lay down the compass divider from the reference point and draw an arc intersecting the LOP. The intersection is the ship's fixed position by radar range and bearing. 
Do not forget to write the time after plotting the ship's position. To make your plotting clean and neat, you can do the plotting like this. We can also use our navigational triangle to lay down the bearings without using the compass rows. The graduations on our navigational triangle are more clearly marked than those on the compass rows. Assuming this is the longitude grid, and this one is the latitude grid. Bring this point of the triangle along the vertical grid line. Then bring the graduation 227 degrees, or 0477 degrees along the vertical line. Be sure that this point of the triangle should also stay along the vertical line. The graduation line 227 or 047 degrees should stay along the vertical line. Our navigational triangle are transparent so the grid lines are still visible even if the triangle are on top. If we draw a bearing line towards northeast, it bears 047 degrees. If the bearing line is towards southwest, it is 227 degrees true. You can also bring this point of the triangle to where the latitude and longitude grid intersect. Next is to bring this triangle to Saginohana point. Then measure 2.80 nautical miles in the latitude scale, and lay down from reference point towards the planned track. The intersection is the fixed position by radar range and bearing at 0920 hours. These are the traditional symbols used when plotting a ship's position on a paper chart using different fixing position techniques. This fixed position symbol is from cross bearing technique. This one is from running fix. These two are for the estimated position. The dead reckoning position. The GPS fix and the radar fix. These symbols may vary, most especially nowadays with the introduction of the electronic chart. Even if we use an electronic chart display and information system, ECTIS. A manual fix by taking ranges and bearings from the radar is necessary when we are in coastal water. As we know our ECTIS is integrated into GPS, and GPS may provide inaccurate information in positioning due to atmospheric and environmental interference. Manual fix by radar range and bearing is commonly used. That's all for now, I hope you find this video helpful, thank you for watching, bye.